Welcome to Transformers Prime Retro Reviews. I am Amy. I am Nick. Hello. <laughs> and today we are continuing a retro review of Transformers Prime, the animated cartoon, a fangirl's perspective. <laughs> I have to put that, that would in be there. Us. That yeah. would be us, yeah. We're, we're uh, girls. Well, last time I checked, I was a girl. So yes. Yeah, I don't absolutely. know about you. <laughs> I just take your word for it. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I'm a robot in disguise. See what Ooh. I did there? <laughs> <laughs> Amy's a pretender, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> oh, goodness. Uh, so the show uh, broadcasted its first show, its first episode, a little over two years ago, November 2012, right after Thanksgiving Day weekend in the USA on The Hub, which is Hasbro's very own channel. Uh, season one is now available from Shout Factory or Amazon, and it looks like this for anyone who has who is watching the video. It's got a cardstock slipcover. It's there's four discs, and it's in widescreen, but it's also available in Blu-ray too. I've got it's the widescreen. Huh? It's three discs on Blu-ray. Yes. Yes, and yeah. I've got the widescreen on DVD because I haven't gotten with the times yet. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, as of the evening of this recording, we are still awaiting the announcement of when uh, the third season will be announced. Rumor has it that it may be sometime this spring, uh, but we will let oh, you know. Fingers crossed. Fingers yeah, crossed. soon, and it's going to be something called. Uh, it's the next chapter called Beast Hunters, so we'll see where mm -hmm. it goes. But we're not there yet, so we're not going to talk about that until we're done, you know, reviewing season one and season two. So <laughs> lots to review and plenty of time to do it in. So mm -hmm. um, we'll let you know either online, probably Twitter. My Twitter is Lady of Wreck. Yours is Nicole. I am Beatles Diva. Beatles like the band, not the bug. Tomb. That's going to be on my tombstone one of these days. Yes. Beatles like the band. <laughs> Awesome. I think that's a great <laughs> way to you know, put it on your tombstone. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> so you can Ultimate also... fan. Ultimate fan, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we loved her. She transformed a lot. <laughs> <laughs> um, so you can also find out some of this information, of course, uh, from T-Formers, or I'm sure that Radio Free Cybertron Network will blurb it about it to um, when and if it comes... Mm -hmm. um, to a fandom near you. <laughs> <laughs> so that being said, uh, we shall review away. Uh, the episode that we will be reviewing is called Darkness Rising, which was split into five parts. We are reviewing part two this evening. So... <laughs> 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 Um, so we return to find Starscream showing the boss around to the operation he's set up since he's been gone. Um, the Energon operation. But Starscream got Earth. demoted, man. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, poor Starscream. <laughs> poor Starscream. Yeah. Uh, but it is a pale victory because he's like really happy of, you know, his nice little operation. It's pale victory to what Megatron has brought back from deep space. It's a shard of dark energon. Wow, you did that really well. <laughs> I've been practicing. <laughs> Can I say I we ask. we did hear it a lot in this in this episode. Um, well, not maybe in this episode, but in the series. And then yeah. to preclude this, not preclude, whatever. Before this, we got uh, Transformers War of Cybertron, the game from High Moon, which seemed to repeat it a lot. So <laughs> it really got in my head. <laughs> so Dark Energon, it's the lifeblood of Unicron. What? They came out with Wait, the word. They Unicron? said it. I don't, I've never heard of Unicron before. Yeah. But not only that, is that they said it in the second episode of Transformers Prime. So we all of a sudden knew, okay, well... Unicron, big planet-sized, you know, transformer. It's the blood of Unicron, and so everybody's like, "What well, does that mean that he's going to be in the show?" Yeah, I re I remember when they said that. I remember was guessing about Unicron. Is, is he the planet? Is he coming? Is he going to be more like a Galactus thing? Or, or yeah. oh, so many guesses. Once that name was yep was said. So. Said it in the first, in the second episode. So yeah, it was it caused a lot of speculation. So it's, yeah. It, yes it did. 
So up for offering to this dark energon shard because they'd like to experiment, a, you know, with it to find out what it does. Uh, Starscream offers the desk, the dead husk of Cliff Jumper. Uh, meanwhile, the Autobots have thoroughly. Because <laughs> in all fairness, it's because Starscream didn't want to die himself. <laughs> well, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, yeah, no, not me. But I've got a present for you. <laughs> I was just gonna throw him out with the trash, but you know, <laughs> hey, if you like it, it saves my, one it saves my hide and makes you happy. Win win. <laughs> yeah, one person's trash is another person's treasure. You know. <laughs> <laughs> Don't tell that to Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't. Absolutely not. Yeah. Because when we get... Yeah. We'll get to that later. <laughs> when that topic is broached. <laughs> oh, I love Starscream. I <laughs> I never cared for him too much in G1. And this one, I totally love the guy. <laughs> I've always liked Starscream. You know, typical fangirl me. I loved Starscream and Bumblebee and the Starscream... God, I love him. I, I, I love this character. <laughs> yeah. So meanwhile, the Autobots have thoroughly briefed the kids on who they are, where they come from. Mostly, you know, they don't know every little detail, but they know enough to know what's going on. And Ratchet points out how fragile they are, at which point an alert goes off to reveal Agent Fowler. They're uh, the Autobots liaison with the outside world. Um, he's there to give them a list of violations he had to clean up, which happens to hap uh, happens quite frequently. Um, and he's also there to find out if the cons are back. And I kind of liked this because it was like suggesting that they had a confrontation with them already on Earth, seemingly left, and now they have returned. So I thought, oh, so that'll that'll be interesting if they decide to, you know, go back and do a couple, you know, mm -hmm. a couple episodes of backstory if they want to. That's a good option. So in any case, uh, Bulkhead is pretty sure that they are able to deal with the problems at hand and they keep they'll keep from injuring the locals. And that's when he crunches something, which comes out with the nice line, <laughs> I needed that. <laughs> that's when we first get, I, I needed that line. Jeffrey did we, did, Coons, I honestly did not, for the win. <laughs> yeah, you didn't know this was going to be an ongoing thing, but when you go back and rewatch it, and you see that was the first time, you're like, oh yeah, that was awesome. <laughs> that was awesome. It was like that was a moment. That was like a a, a milestone moment where Jeffrey Coons said something epic, and you're like, yes. <laughs> uh, I, I can I tell you how much I love that guy. He does Ratchet's voice so well. He's brought yeah. a new side to Ratchet that yeah. it's just like, okay, I love that guy. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. <laughs> and you're and all of the hype that Andy, our friend Andy, that did on Jeffrey Coombs, well deserved. Well deserved. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> For so sure. The Autobots declare that they will take care of the situation and keep Agent Fowler posted, so there you go. Meanwhile, the cons use the dark energon to make zombie <laughs> Wait, what cliff was that jumper. I, I didn't hear that. What, what oh, is okay. It? Dark energon. Like... Dark <laughs> energon. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> I should do that every single time I say dark energon. Dark energon. <laughs> uh, to make the, so he makes a zombie cliff jumper. He's back from the dead because zombies are cool. <laughs> <laughs> At least at the time of this, we were just starting to see more and more zombies. And it was like, zombies were so awesome. <laughs> so it was just like, okay, it's great. It's in Transformers now. Transformers have zombies. <laughs> Walking Dead just came out the same time around this. <laughs> you yep. gotta remember that. <laughs> yep. That's, I think that's about the time when it did. So it was like, wow, we've got, it's so hip. Transformers, who knew? <laughs> They're with the times. <laughs> yeah, totally with the times. Um, so Megatron is pretty pleased with the results, and that's why he, that's what he's going to use to raise an army. All he needs to do now is learn how to control it. Can anybody control a zombie? <laughs> hmm. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. So Cliff Jumper's signal pops back online at the autobase. 
and uh, that's when they're like, oh, whoa, there's he's 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 still there. He's not dead. He could be alive. Uh, so they leave the human kids with Ratchet, and the rest of the bots use the ground bridge uh, to ground bridge to the location they picked up the signal. Uh, and it turns out to be an Energon mine, where they scope out the operation that Starscream's been running for some time. Mm -hmm. um, and they quickly engage the cons, because they're kind of discovered. Uh, while the kids take a tour of the Autobot base, amazing Ratchet <laughs> with their usefulness with the computer bugs that they've been having. <laughs> oh, good old Raph. There he goes. He's hacking the system yep. for the first time. So. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, all of that primitive, you know, human computer technology. technology exactly. If I remember right, mm -hmm. it was like what a Windows little circle with an arrow saying, you know, alert or alarm or warning yeah, yeah, or yeah, error, no, syntax like error. Those, <laughs> yeah. yeah, syntax error. Mm -hmm. I can understand why. Yeah, but it's really frustrating. Up everywhere, and I'm like, uh. <laughs> yeah. So back in the Energon mine, the bots have made some progress. They have found the base of ops to, in the mine, and Megatron wanting, you know, he wants to prepare a wonderful reception to the presence of Optimus Prime. So he tells Starscream to blow the mine. <laughs> I loved how he said that. Starscream's too happy. I can tell. No, you know? <laughs> no, he's worked really hard for that mine, and you know what? Mm -hmm. He's Megatron's back. What, like five minutes, and he says, "Blow it up." Yeah. He's like, "What? No way." <laughs> I'd be like a purist boss. Okay. Like, I worked hard I've, for that mine. I've been working for saw mines almost literally for yeah. three years while you've been gone. Now you're telling me to get rid of it? Uh, what, yeah. Right. What do you have to show for it? Just a little stick of dark energon. <laughs> mine actually does help us. Yours turns us into these strange, crazy creatures. Why would we want that? <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> So RC, she zeroes in on Cliffjumper, and the bots cover her as she goes to aid him. But after all of her hard work, she finds that he's half the bot he used to be. And before a zombie <laughs> Cliff can have literally. a nibble, yeah, literally, <laughs> he, he quite literally is half the zombie that he used to be because um, he's been cut in half <laughs> by um, Megatron. Yeah. Uh, so before he can, you know, have a nibble and eat on her, you know, she she drops him and cuz they were, you know, she had to climb up to a place where, to get him cuz he was kind of on a cliff and, you know, she mm -hmm. was holding on to him and he falls down and it's like, "Oh, cliff." Um, she drops the him. Bell up cliff. Yeah. He that fell. Poetry oh, but I'm bumped. He fell. <laughs> poetry <in> motion right there. <laughs> So Starscream makes his appearance, and he leaves a little ticking surprise. So the bots immediately vacate the mine as uh, the cons are swiftly moving their ship, the Nemesis, away to avoid the blast. Uh, Prime calls Ratchet for a ground bridge, and they safely bridge away. But the cons think they might have been killed in the explosion. <laughs> At least Starscream does. So they report back their findings. Not Cliff. Not anymore. He's not like he used to be. Uh, he's like those terrible experiments during the war, at which point R.C. starts feeling faint and dizzy, and she kind of almost falls over. And Ratchet detects a strange substance on her hand. As mm -hmm. the kids realize, robots who can get dizzy, they have emotions, and that can yeah. ultimately die. I loved <laughs> that. That was great. I like that. I thought that was a good part of the episode because it was just like, if you were in these kids' situation, I think we all would have the same reaction. They're just, they're just mindless robots. I mean, we deal with computerized things in our daily lives. Yeah. You don't think like anything, of it, but then you actually see something like that. Yeah. I like that that part. It was very humanistic for them. So. Yeah. Well, and it kind of established uh, what every fan kind of feels about them, that they're not just emotion they're not emotionless mm -hmm. you know creatures that just you know are can pro be that can be programmed and just told what to do like they are more than that so and i liked that they pointed that out so so the kids explain that it's late and that they have to get home if they don't their protection won't protect them <laughs> the the autobots protection won't protect them from their parents going atomic <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> 
Exactly. Especially when it comes to Jack Darby's mother. <laughs> She's kind of like, nah, Jack? Yeah. So, she and was we'll actually out looking for him. Yeah. It's like, oh. She does go there. She totally <laughs> goes there. Yeah. <laughs> so that's uh, at which point that Optimus Prime assigns them bodyguards to watch over <laughs> them at from a distance. So Bulkhead is to watch over Miko. Bumblebee over Raphael. And RC is paired with Jack. And she's not really happy about that, but okay. She doesn't that, need another partner. That was probably one of the best. That was some of the best things. She's like, oh, I'm feeling sick. Uh, feeling sick. Ratchet's like, your fish message says you're fine. Yeah. <laughs> I loved it. I love that interaction between RC and Ratchet. I'm like, oh. It really our family, just because of that. Like, <laughs> it, it was a nice banter. And it's not just with RC. I mean, he, he has that kind of attitude with a lot of them, actually. <laughs> But they're, they're everyone. <laughs> yes, yes. Except for Prime, he really doesn't. True, do that true. He, mm-hmm. except at the very end of season two, he's like, we yeah. needed that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 stronger, well, faster, at... stronger, faster. When he really opposes him, that was pretty awesome. <laughs> oh, he also puts the moves at RC. Remember, but that's yeah. the future. Yeah, 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 yeah. That, we're getting ahead of ourselves here. <laughs> One of my favorite moments of Prime. I'm like, oh yeah, Ratchet just hit on RC. I think so. yeah, he totally did. It was awesome. <laughs> I loved it. I loved it. Oh, the episodes we have to review. <laughs> So we follow Jack back to his house, where he introduces his returning from home mother to his new motorcycle. That's a nice mother-son moment. And then they, you know, call it a night. And the next morning, which is Saturday, the kids return back to the base. So, yeah. Uh, But the episode flips back to the cons. Uh, Starscream assumes that Prime is dead and he's talking to Megatron about it. Uh, Megatron is sure that he's not, which (laughs) kind of pushes him to the next level of, I guess, a plan that he's kind of formulating. He -hmm. takes and ejects the dark and a John into his spark core. It's like, ah! <laughs> we don't even see what we don't see what happens because he just puts it in his core and then it's like ah and you can see it's like taking over and then we flip to another scene. We, we the episode ends back in Ratchet's lab where he's examining the sample that he took from RC that made her kind of weak. Um, what he doesn't see is what the substance does when a small drop of it falls on some broken equipment. It mm-hmm. springs to life, taking on a, a life of its own. And that's mm-hmm. the end of the episode. Ooh. We have no <laughs> idea what's happening to, to Megatron. Is he turning into a zombie Megatron or a super villain? Yeah. He's already a super villain. An ultra super villain. I don't know. Ultra super villain. Yeah. <laughs> so, thoughts on this episode? I enjoyed this episode. Again, it's kind of hard. To, that first episode was so high. But this one was really fun. Again, you get to know, you, you're introduced to Fowler, which is really good. I, I enjoyed Fowler. Uh, you get to see a little bit more of Ratchet in this episode. Uh, yeah. In the first episode, so you don't see a whole lot of him. Uh, you get to see some more emotions from RC. You get to see the kids starting to learn and grow. It's a very good episode. It's a very solid episode. Yep. Cool. Cool. Yep. I liked, as much as they said that we had way too much dark energy on, I liked the element of it mm-hmm. and how it plays a role in season one. What I didn't like is how they kind of summarily dropped it in season two, and we haven't heard a thing of it since. <laughs> That's true. I That's, didn't think about that. <laughs> yeah, we, we really haven't. Dark Energon, it came, and it just fizzled out and went. <laughs> it was just, that was it. I was like, aw. Yeah. I mean, it just would have made sense if you at least said, oh, here it's this thing that we're going to put on the, you know, mm-hmm. We're gonna put it on a shelf, and we'll we'll deal with it if we have to again in the future. Well, they didn't even do that. It was just kind of like, <laughs> okay, there were no consequences. We had it, and now we don't. <laughs> yep. I was like, aw. It, it was fun while it lasted. So one of my, one of my favorite piece of animation happened in here. It's when Starscream is gonna blow 
mine, and he did his transformation by diving in, and then I don't know. Remember that part? Oh yeah, love love that bit of animation. one of the most just, epic transformations I think they ever that. did in this series was on this. Yeah, was him doing that. That was really really great because it was like oh. I mean. Yeah. This guy should go out for the Olympics for the dive team. That yeah. was just so beautiful. <laughs> That's how awesome it was that he dived down, transformed, and went up. It was just, oh, that was cool. That was... All... Oh, it was beautiful. I'm like, that's yeah. cool. <laughs> so was it believable to you how the children were involved? Because I remember some people saying, they were like, oh, this is going to be the ongoing weekend adventures of the bots and the kids, you know, kind of yeah, you know, but show. The thing is, they did a good job of saying they've got to protect the kids. They, I mean, the Decepticons know who these kids are. And the Autobots are the one people that know how deadly Decepticons are. So I could see their point of view. But I also like how the kids were learning. They're like, okay, they're, they're learning from the bots and the bots are learning from them. I say it was fairly believable. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Cool. I would say. What about you? Uh, yeah, I liked what they did. I it didn't really seem very forced because it was like, okay, well, they interacted with these guys accidentally in the way that they did, but it just worked. Like it was one thing led to another, you know, because RC was in the, in a town, and Jack, you know, happened to be bold enough to sit on somebody else's bike. You know, he got yeah, involved, yeah. which just snowballed one thing into another. But it was a decision that had a consequence, which then had another mm-hmm. consequence, which brought in another one. And, you know, yeah, humans multiply. You just, <laughs> you, if well, you're that, around us, you were, you're going to get found out eventually. That, that reminds me of like when, you know, Optimus was telling the kids about this. Jack doesn't want anything to deal with this. He does not want to be involved in this. Yeah. But in the next you know, couple episodes, I think eventually he gets to that point. Yeah. Yeah. But he realizes he could be in trouble. And so he's just doing it because he doesn't want to get in trouble. But he yeah. doesn't want to be there right now. Yeah. So. Well, he gets there at least. I think in the next, yeah. the next episode of the episode after that, where he I goes, so. I don't want to be here with you guys. And then Miko's mm-hmm. like, you can't resist. You can't resist. <laughs> <laughs> See, I would be more like Miko be like, I'd be like, just how she had it, that interaction with Bulkhead. Are you a truck? You you punch things? And I'd be like, uh-huh. I like that. She'd be like, okay, what do you turn for me to? Do you... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, when they're talking about the, the Autobot socks drawer, I'm like, that'd be cool. See what Autobot socks look like. Yeah. <laughs> and then she's like, I ain't buying it, Jack. Not buying it. Be careful, Ratchet. <laughs> okay, so zombies. Zombies. It's is this zombies. a good choice or is it uh, wrong? <laughs> I I am a zombie fan, so of course I'm going to say it's a good choice. I, I liked how, how they... Well, the thing is, the whole thing with Dark Energon, you never know which way it's going to go. Is it going to just transform it into another mach- live machine? Or is it going to transform it to a zombie? It's, I, I, I like it. I, I like the zombies. But again, I'm a zombie fan. Girl, so. <laughs> yep. I thought it was kind of cool. I mean, it's a, it's a kind of a mishmash of what was going on at the time. And I don't know if they planned it that way. But yeah, zombies, it works. I mean, it kind of works, especially the fact that Dark Energon is supposed to be the flip side of regular Energon. So it would make sense that <clears throat> it would do the opposite. It would bring back something dead into something morbid and creepy and dark. <laughs> well, if you think about Energon gives the the Transformers life. So Dark Energon would probably give life to the dead. I don't know. See, there you go. (laughs) I I almost want to go to the point, to the extreme of it would take away the life. (laughs) There you go. But it could. We didn't know that. We were like, what's going to happen to Megatron at the end of this? Because, you you know. This guy's insane. You don't know what this stuff's going to do and you're just going to jam it through your own chest plate. No. Yes, this is exactly <laughs> Starscream's point. He had a point. Why would you do that? You're you're not thinking straight. <laughs> yeah. I don't think I don't think you have to be some type of highly crazed person to shove something in your own chest and not know what might happen. <laughs> and this <laughs> explains Megatron to a T. <laughs> I'm just like, first of all, that's gotta hurt. At some point, that's just. That's not going to tickle for sure. You know? No, no. But, you know, Megatron is 
you know, awesome enough that he could take it, right? <laughs> I think I it showed the level of his commitment to the cause. <laughs> I think it shows the level of his insanity. <laughs> there, that too, exactly, exactly. <laughs> All right. Well, um, that is our episode review for this week. Um, you can hear a full review of Transformers Prime, the full reviews, over on a pat pod on a podcast called Moonbase Two, which they um, have called these episodes called Master Prime Theater. It's at moonbase two dot libsyn dot com, and we will see you next week. Aloha. Ciao. Oh gosh! And take two. <laughs> and take two. Yeah, but ching. Okay. It's all that dark energy and zombies. You, you've been sucking on the dark energy. I know. I've been sucking on the dark energy. <laughs>